All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the last day of Mini Bar. I hope everybody's enjoyed their last couple of weeks. It's been fun and been super awesome that Mini Star was able to put this together this year. Um, before I get started, I just want to mention that if you have questions throughout the session, uh, feel free to just ask your questions as you have them, and then I'll see them at the end and, and address any questions that you have. My name is Tyler Johnson. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about App Clips. Um, I work for a company called LiveFront. If you're not familiar with us, we're a team of designers and engineers that help companies from startups to Fortune 500 companies build be beautiful digital products. OK, so the very first question that's on your mind is probably, what is an App Clip? And I think in order to understand what an app clip is, it's useful to look at what problem an app clip solves. So how many people remember the phrase, there's an app for that? I remember how glorious it was when I could stop printing off map, qu map, map quest directions and just get in my car and go. Uh, I've always loved being able to do everything that I do digitally, and I hate printing things off. But we've kind of reached a phase where instead of just there being an app for that, there's 10,000 app, apps for that. And we've kind of become overwhelmed. How do you pick which app you're going to download? There's 12 different marketplace apps here. How do you know which one you should download? Do you download all of them? Do you give all of them your location information and push notification information? And just so you can get marketing notifications constantly on your phone. What do you do if a friend shares a new app with you? I had a situation happen like this recently where a friend shared some quarantine dumbbells with me. And when I clicked the link, it brought me to a website that prompted me to download their, download their app. And so I'm curious what anybody else in this situation would have done. Well, if you're anything like me, You just swiped away. It wasn't worth it to download the app. OK, so an app clip, here's a, just a quick little demo of what an app clip is. It's a first impression. It's an opportunity to show off how well you solve the user's problem. And in addition, it gives you the ability to add physical and digital discovery to your app. OK, so now that you have a brief intro to what an app clip is, let's go through the topics for today's presentation. We're going we're gonna to cover five different topics. The first is going to be general guidelines for developing your app clip. Then we're going to look at how your app clip gets invoked. Then we're going to take a look at how to respond to invocations. When an app clip, it, when the user is done using an app clip, we're going to take a look at what happens to the app clip. And then we'll just do a quick little demo of how some code works. OK, we'll start with the general guidelines. As you saw in the brief little demo that I gave in the beginning, there was an app clip card. So when the user invokes, or when the invocation URL for your app clip gets invoked, the app clip card is displayed to the user. And there are some guidelines that Apple provides around this app clip card. And we'll start with the title, where it says Jitterbug Joe Cafe. That's the title. It can be up to 18 characters long, and it should be the name of the app or the name of the feature in your app that the user is going to drill into. Next, we have the subtitle. The subtitle is 43 characters long, or it can be up to three characters, and it should be a description of what the user should expect to find when they open your app clip. Next, we'll take a look at the image. The image should be a 3,000 by 2,000 pixel PNG or JPEG. And Apple suggests that you avoid screenshots of your app that you might find in the App Store. And don't include text in this image. Next, the action button, where it says open. There are one of three titles that you can choose for this button. You can choose open, view, or play. And all of this information for your app clip card is configured in App Store Connect. Next, we'll take a look at some additional general guidelines from Apple. 
They say that you should not use your app clip for marketing. So again, this is an opportunity for your app to shine. You should show off what problem you solve and how well you solve it and get the user from point A to point B as, as efficiently as possible and not worry about marketing. You should scope your app, app clip to a specific task. So remember, this is a first impression. So you want the user to be impressed with your app and to eventually download the full app because they have appreciated how well your app clip worked. Uh, Apple suggests that you should not include things like rewards. Rewards work well in the full app, but in the app clip, you don't need people necessarily signing in to obtain rewards. And that's something that you can actually handle later in the full app if the user decides to migrate from your app clip to the full app. You're not allowed to make network requests in the background in your app clip. So if the user switches apps or something, you can't be making analytics network requests in the background. Data, data privacy is strongly enforced in app clips. So you do not have the access to health kit information. You don't have access to music, activity data, contacts, messages, photos, files, or the user's reminders in an app clip. No tab bars. Uh, again, you should be focusing on a single task. If you feel the urge to add a tab bar to your app clip, you can maybe consider multiple invocation URLs instead, which will allow the user to drill into the particular feature in your app that, that they might be interested in using. And lastly, the app clip cannot be bigger than 10 megabytes. So this is just to ensure that the app clip is downloaded very quickly and the user can start using your app clip immediately without having to wait too long. Okay, let's talk about how an app clip is invoked. There are a few different ways that an app clip can be invoked and we'll just run through those really quickly here. First, I grouped NFC tags and QR codes together because there are two different ways of invoking a URL. One, you hold your phone up to the NFC tag. The other, you open the camera on your phone and scan the QR code, and you have the ability to launch uh, the invocation URL. Next is through Safari. If you add a meta tag to your website, when the user goes to visit your website, they will see the black banner that you see at the top of the screen, and they're able to download the app clip or interact with the app clip directly from, from there. Next is through iMessage. So again, if you add the meta tag to your website and a user shares a link to your website through iMessage, app will automatically render your app clip in iMessage. And this is something that would have been extremely useful, for example, for me with the dumbbells that my friend shared. Of course, I would have opened the app clip as long as I didn't have to worry about deleting it later or enabling push notifications or all that, all that setup that I didn't want to go through. This would have been a great use of an app clip for that particular app. App clips can be invoked from Apple Maps. So if you add an invocation URL to Apple Maps, then the uh, app clip can be invoked from there. And this is set up through App Store Connect. And I'm guessing that you can add your indication URLs to Google Maps as well. This isn't something obviously that Apple has talked about, but I'm thinking that it would probably work to launch your app clip as well. Finally, there are location-based invocations of app clips. So if you add your app clip to a particular location in Apple Maps, then serious suggestions will suggest your app clip as well. Finally, uh, users can invoke your app clip from the app library. The app library is a new feature in iOS 14, and you can see there in the upper right, uh, the Panera app clip, I can just go over to my app library, which is a additional screen at the end of my home screen and launch the app clip from there. 
Okay, now, next let's talk about responding to invocations. So there are four different things that you need to do to respond to an invocation. First, you need to implement the correct methods. Then you need to check the activity type, verify the location if needed, and display the correct screen. And we'll just dive into those a little bit here. First, implementing the correct methods. Anyone who's familiar with writing an iOS application is probably familiar with either the UI application delegate methods or the UI scene delegate methods. And in addition to those two different routes, there's also the uh, Swift UI version. There's a new method, or there's a method called on continue user activity that you need to implement. And when the user invokes an invocation URL, that is the method that will get called in your app clip. Next, you need to check the activity type. You want to verify that the activity type is uh, NS user activity browsing web. And then you can verify the location. So to use location information on an app clip, what you have to do is add an entry for NS app clip request location confirmation and set the value to true. And just a warning that if you add this entry to the plist, when your app clip is invoked, the user will be uh, alerted that the app clip wants to use your location, and they actually have the uh, they have the ability to deny your app clip location information. So next, after you have added that. PList entry to your PList, you create a CL circular region with maximum radius of 500 meters. And then the lat long that you use for this CL circular region will come from one of two places. So either you need your invitation URL needs to include the latitude and longitude. So if you are, let's say, placing a QR code on a building, you know the latitude and longitude of the building. You can put that into the query parameters for the URL that uh, is that launches the app clip from the QR code, and then you can just parse those lat latitude and longitude information directly in your app clip. Another way that you can do it is come up with a uni unique identifier. So if you're running like a coffee shop, you could have a unique identifier for the coffee shop in downtown San Francisco. And then you can make a network request with that unique identifier to get the latitude and longitude for that particular location. So those are the two different ways that you get the latitude and longitude and use those to create a CL circular region. Finally, you will call this method confirm acquired on an AP activation payload. And I'll show this a little bit in my demo. Finally, you need to display the correct screen. It's important to note that if the user has the full app installed on their phone, if they, um, when the invocation URL for the app clip gets invoked, your app will actually be launched and not the app clip. And you can support multiple URLs so the user can, for example, go to the coffee shop in downtown San Francisco and be able to interact with your app for that particular location. You could also support an additional location in San Jose or Minneapolis, for example. And you can also provide a default invocation URLs. Okay, what happens to your app clip when the user is done using it? First, there's an undetermined lifespan. So Apple reserves the right to remove your app clip from the device at any time for any reason. And users can actually reuse app clips. So if you launch an app clip, it might stick around for a day or two. You can relaunch it from the app library or using the invocation methods that we discussed previously. And when you do that, the app clip remains on your device for a longer period of time. But of course, that's not a specified period of time. So you shouldn't expect your app clip to remain on the user's device for any amount of time. 
Finally, the users can convert from your app clip to the full app and Apple provides us with a mechanism to migrate data. So if, if rewards, for example, is something that's important to you, you can keep track of what the user does in the app clip and then reward them for it in the full version of your app. Okay, so I just want to do a quick demo to show off how to handle invocation URLs and location information. So this is the beginning of the app clip here. So the first step we're going to do is we're implementing this on continue user activity method here. And we just, if we pass in as user activity browsing web to this method, then our, the method that gets invoked when the user launches the app clip, uh, that will get called for only this particular uh, type. So once the once this method is running, we're going to grab the web page URL and we're going to parse it parse it into its components. From there, we are going to get the latitude and longitude from the URL. Using the latitude and longitude, we can create a CL circular region. And here's the part where we call the confirm acquired method on this payload. The payload is obtained from the user activity app clip activation payload. So we can call this method on the payload and it will tell us if the user is inside the specified geolocation. And for anybody who's done location stuff in an app before, you notice that this is starkly different from the way that you use the location information in a regular app because you don't you, you don't have access to any of the location information about the user. You're calling an app library to say, confirm for me that the user is within this geolocation. Okay, so when I run this, That's the way de demo demos go, right? They have to crash. This is literally just working. <laughs> Well, one other thing that I want to point out, uh, there wasn't a whole lot to see in my demo app anyway. It was just a recreation of Panera, Panera app. But I do want to uh, that you can provide a environment variable for the the URL that you want to provide, or that you want the invocation URL that you want to provide for debugging purposes. And so you can see that I just provided a, a sample URL here with the latitude and longitude that don't actually make sense. So I was expecting basically for this request to fail. So that is all that I have. <laughs>